first document that promises freedom to black people in America is the Emancipation Proclamation. And it comes with an asterisk that says, but you gotta help us win the war. Frank Smith Jr. is the founder and executive director of the African American Civil War Memorial and Museum on Vermont Avenue and U Street Northwest. Smith's involvement with the museum goes back to the early 1990s. While representing Ward 1 on the D.C. City Council, Smith formed the African American Civil War Memorial Freedom Foundation. The group's purpose? To honor the more than 200,000 African American soldiers and sailors who helped bring the Union to victory and to make sure their stories are well told. Smith tirelessly drummed up the political and financial support needed to make the project happen. No small feat. Finally, in 1998, he presided over the dedication of the African American Civil War Memorial at 10th and U Streets Northwest. Descendants who came to the memorial dedication presented Smith with artifacts, letters, photos, papers, and Smith needed some place to preserve and show them. But if there's something Frank Smith knew how to do, it was organized. He'd had years of training. Born and raised in rural Georgia, Frank Smith studied hard, excelled at debate, and graduated from high school at the top of his class. At age 16, Smith entered Morehouse College in Atlanta, where he soon joined the Civil Rights Movement. In 1962, Smith joined the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee and left Morehouse for Mississippi. There, he ran a Head Start program, organized sharecroppers, and registered voters. It was dangerous work. In Greenwood, he was photographed alongside SNCC leader Bob Moses and organizer Willie Peacock a day before their SNCC headquarters was firebombed. His voter registration work landed him in the Greenwood Jail. During Freedom Summer in 1964, Smith traveled the country raising funds and support for the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party an alternative to Mississippi's all-white state party. Fannie Lou Hamer was one of its founders. The group demanded, unsuccessfully, to be seated at that year's Democratic National Convention. Nonetheless, their battle helped push through the 1965 Voting Rights Act. In 1965, Frank Smith came to Washington, D.C. to work for the Institute for Policy Studies. He ran a leadership training project called the Washington Workshop. The project brought Southern blacks to D.C. and coached them in how to tap into federal government resources. Smith returned South, where he mentored black political candidates, organized and tutored school children entering integrated schools. He returned to D.C. in 1968 and continued organizing by fighting for tenants' rights, affordable housing, green space, and more in his Adams Morgan neighborhood. He started winning elections. To the first Advisory Neighborhood Commission in 1974 and to the D.C. Board of Education in 1979. He spoke out early against the displacement caused by gentrification in 1980. In 1982, he won the first of four terms representing Ward 1 on the D.C. Council. On the Council, Smith chaired the Housing and Economic Development Committee and later Finance and Revenue. Councilmember Smith looked at how his Shaw and U Street corridor had been torn up by the 1968 civil disturbances and then by Metro construction. Creating a memorial to the U.S. colored troops of the Civil War, he reasoned, would attract tourists and help revive the area. And a memorial would also right a wrong. History books made no mention of the U.S. colored troops. So he used his visibility to raise political and financial support for the project. In 1994, he oversaw the groundbreaking beside one of the U Street Metro entrances, 
where the memorial would be installed. In July 1998, he presided over the dedication of Ed Hamilton's bronze sculpture, The Spirit of Freedom. Historian John Hope Franklin was there. He sat on the advisory committee. General Colin Powell was there. John Lewis, Smith's personal hero and a friend from the civil rights days, has spoken there on Founders Day. 1,000 members of the motorcycle club Buffalo Thunder show up every year on Memorial Day and present a $2,500 check. Yes, that's NBC4's Jim Vance on the right. And then there are the descendants. For many, the memorial takes the place of the gravesite they don't have for their ancestors who fought in the Civil War. Smith has connected with three or 4,000 descendants. The year after the memorial was dedicated, Smith opened the museum for the items people brought and many more he collected. In 2011, the museum moved to its current home in the former Grimke School. Among the more than 200,000 people who visit each year are many school groups Smith loves having the opportunity to reach children. He even took a group of 50 out to Los Angeles to meet Denzel Washington, star of the 1989 movie Glory, the story of the 54th Massachusetts Volunteer Infantry. Frank Smith has been recognized for his work many times before tonight. In Atlanta, his portrait appears in a mural honoring pioneers of the civil rights movement. And in 2013, Morehouse, the school he left one semester shy of a BA, presented him with its highest honor, the Presidential Renaissance Medallion. Frank Smith continues to work for civil rights, to teach, and to inspire by taking us back to an era that demands our attention and respect.